Hello everybody, Jonathan Reeves here with another Vectorworks video. Now today we're going to look at how to use image fills to enhance your drawings and I've been really enjoying making some creative uh, enterprises here, just having a bit of fun, but using the amazing image fills and some other cool effects that I'm going to show you completely within Vectorworks. Now these kind of drawings are really quite straightforward to do in Vectorworks and if you like what you're seeing, um, look forward to enjoying the video and you'll learn how to do it. Thanks for watching. But let's get started on our tutorial on how to use image fills and create image fills for Vectorworks, but also to explore some other nice sort of artistic effects so that you can create really atmospheric drawings like this one. So what I'm gonna do is go up to a brand new layer and we're just gonna start off by drawing a very simple shape for our wall that we're going to texture and graffiti up. So we're gonna click onto the rectangle tool and I'm just gonna pop in a shape here. Let's move that to the center going to select the center anchor points and from memory I remember the last one was about three meters by say 20 meters so I'm just going to type in the units there 20m okay brilliant now the very first thing we want to do is pop open our resource panel and actually have a look at the image resources themselves now I've got some in here already which I'll come and show you in a second but if you're new to this this is what you're going to want to do click on new resource or just double click into the central section go and create an image resource and click create. Now if the image is already in, in the file you can actually reuse it but let's go ahead and do this from scratch. So we'll import an image file here, we'll click OK and then in our finder you can see on my desktop I've got a little textures folder. So I can go through and select some of these textures that I've downloaded from the internet. Do make sure that when you look for these that you search for either seamless or tileable textures um, so that they come through really nicely. Try and keep an eye on the file size as well. You don't want anything too large. So we'll just go for a nice simple grass one. Let's click and bring that in. When it comes in, you do get some options here. Um, edit attributes and image effects. I'll come back to those later. Also, you have two compression modes. Let's go for the JPEG. You can actually reference the image as well, which means it's held externally. And if it was to change, it would update your Vectorworks file. But let's keep it simple for now. We'll click OK. Great, OK, so you can see if I did want to, I could just drag and drop that onto my drawing. And there we have got some really nice sort of grass already in the file. Now, these image fills do take a bit of time to create. So what I've done, been really quite busy lately in creating some libraries that I actually do sell on the store. So check these out. Let's have a little look at these. So I'm going to go through to my image packs. Um, here is the number two image pack here at the moment the second one and you can see it's really nicely divided up into folders with some image fills already created for you so this is lovely we'll have a look at this in a second but if I would like to use this there's two ways that I can actually use it I can basically just go through and if I want to I can just drag and drop these textures onto the drawing let's just zoom in to have a look at the quality of that texture it's not the right scale yet but we'll sort that out in a second so that's a really nice way to work with these textures just dragging and dropping the other thing that you can actually do um, is right click and open the file from here and we'll just take a look at it for a second and just close down resources now here's another example that I've actually put as a little demo in this file itself so you get this if you do buy the pack and it's quite a nice little drawing with some sort of little techniques of shadowing and gradients, that sort of thing. So if I zoom in, let's have a look, look at the quality of these. They're really nice. So things like site plans, some of these things like ash felts and things would work really, really well. Um, there's a really nice collection of things like bricks as well. Really high quality. And what I like about these is they're not too perfect. They're kind of slightly weathered and irregular. All sorts of different styles that you can go for. Excellent, so that's really, really nice. And lots of concretes and things like this. So the other thing that you'll notice about the texture pack here, which is actually really cool, is each one of these uh, samples, if you like, is in a class. So for example, if you click onto this one, you'll notice it's in text for texture, um, metal, copper. So all of these are textured up. Now a really nice little aspect to this is, if you do want to copy these into your drawing, what you can do is select a bunch of them. Let's show you how this works. Um, let's select a few of these and we'll just sort of copy those. Let's get a couple more. 
copy them into my project. And if I go into my uh, new project now, you'll notice that those classes don't currently exist. But if I paste them in, basically those classes are generated. Okay, I can even delete those if I would like to now. And then what I can do is use my classes in order to assign attributes to the objects. So this is really nice. I can right click assign to selection and that will immediately put the correct texture onto the drawing as well as actually kind of keeping me nice and organized at the same time. Now I really love this approach and this is a sort of the best practice approach really if you're going to take a bit more time and do things properly. You can also manage the attributes by turning them off and of course if you did want to make a global change all you've got to do is change the graphics of this particular class. So a very very nice aspect to that having them all classed up. Okay so here's our wall. Now let's have a look at this. You've got to bear in mind that these image fills are not necessarily to scale. So what I think we'll do is we'll double click four and we'll just drop in a brick 225 tab 75 and we'll just basically place that for reference. Okay, good. So what I'd recommend is if you do bring these in, let's just slide that opacity down a bit so that we can actually kind of put a brick here. And then what you do, you click the attribute mapping tool. Now the attribute mapping tool, you'll see somewhere there's gonna be a little tile. So what we'll do is we'll move that closer to the corner where we're working. And now that I've got it here, I can do the setting out point from this corner. What's wonderful is I can basically just click and scale. So you can see that I can actually use this to get my brick pretty much the right size and proportions. It doesn't have to be exact really for this kind of work, but it does help to have it a look, looking a bit more realistic, I think. I think we're nearly there. And um, if you did want to, by the way, you could actually click on the button here and scale it with numbers. But I think it's just nice to be able to kind of rotate it here. By the, by the, sorry, scale it. But if you do want to actually rotate, you can. Just to show you, you can actually rotate the image file as well. Let's undo that. Excellent. So I'm pretty happy with the scale of this. It's looking really, really nice. So here's our brick texture and it's looking very, very attractive at the moment. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is slow down my transitions. So you'll notice that in this particular file, I've got a little folder for view transitions and at the moment I'm on a quite a slow transition. So I'm gonna go for just a fast transition. And that means that now when I zoom in, it'll be kind of quick as it normally is. So I'll show you how to do the view transitions at another video later, but that's just a nice little extra. Okay, so if we remember um, on our other design, what I had was a few extra little features. So the first couple of features I had were a few almost like uh, buttresses on the wall. So to do this, I'm gonna use my eyedropper tool, gonna to pick up that texture and just drop it onto there. Now you'll notice that it's actually basically changed the scale uh, back to the original, okay? So that's quite an important thing to remember. If you do want to, you can right click and locate the image resource in here. You could actually edit it and change the scale globally Okay, but the other nice thing we can do is obviously we can just simply duplicate this and let's just make that say 500 for say two bricks, 450 to be more precise. Let's do that. In fact, we'll do 225 times two, just so it's exactly two bricks wide. Now, to get this nice little three dimensional effect you saw that I had on the other drawing, what we did was use drop shadow. Okay, and the drop shadow is a particularly nice little effect that you can apply. And basically you can click onto the settings. We'll do a number of little tricks in here. Firstly, I think we'll tone it down a bit, 50%. We'll also change the angle. Okay, so we'll just go to zero and preview. Yeah, that's, how, that's what I was looking for, like a horizontal shadow. And the amount of offset is up to you really, um, but I quite like having a little bit more Let's say two, looks good. So suddenly that looks really quite three-dimensional without really having done much more work. And if we turn off the edge here and say none, then all you've really got to do is just kind of match that brick up with the one that's tiling there, just so you can get that nice effect. Okay, so we'll see if we can kind of do this a little bit more, just duplicate a few of those, just to create this nice sort of three-dimensional effect here. I think that looks cool. Okay, so now let's look at something else which is similar, um, which is where we actually kind of do almost like a depression in the brick. So what we'll do here 
is a similar thing. We'll basically click and draw and basically apply a drop shadow to the side. Now to do this we can use a gradient. So we'll go to a gradient effect, um, <laughs> not a yellow shadow. So let's click onto this one and change the shadow. I've already got the one that I needed in here as you can see. I think it's this one. You can see there is a big library of these but let's just double click on that one. And then finally we can just use opacity combined with the gradient effect to get quite a nice little soft shadow in that corner. And again let's turn the pen off and then finally what we'll do is we will duplicate it and rotate it a couple of times. So just doing a couple of shortcuts, Command D and Command L. So I can rotate that round. Now we've got a little bit of a problem here where the shadow uh, overlaps with the opacity. So all we do here is use the clip tool. Um, one of my favorite tools, the clip tool. People don't often use this tool, but it's really effective. And I'm basically just gonna click that 45 degree there. Let's now select this one with the option key and we'll basically do the same. Okay, so that looks like a nice little drop shadow. So I think what we'll do here is we'll actually go into our image resources and we'll put in a different material. Um, so let's just refer back to our library and see if there's anything nice we can use in here. Some really nice wood textures. Um, what would look good here? I think maybe some kind of brick actually, but just a different type. Let's try that. So we'll click into there. You can see the brick is now applied. And basically let's scale that up a bit. In fact, I'm not quite sure about that. I think we're gonna go for something a bit more rustic. That looks nice. But because of the um, way we've done this sort of little shadow effect, you can see it's actually quite nice. And if you did want to change that a little bit more, you can go to resources, select the texture and edit it. And here you can play around with the sort of slider for the shadow itself. So you can change the quality of the image a little bit and you can see it just makes it look a bit more three dimensional. Okay, good. So we'll copy this a few times. So I'm just doing command D, command D just to create a nice sort of image effect here. So this is just giving you a bit of an idea of how you can create some of these effects. Now the other couple of things that I did were to put a bit of a pavement in here and let's just do that by drawing in our rectangle tool, just snap that into there and basically size that. Let's do 150 for the pavement. Let's duplicate it down for a little bit of road and this is so easy we just pop open resources, go to asphalt double click to apply the texture or we can simply just drag and drop if we would like just to get a little baseline in there. Okay that's looking good. Now the next thing you'll notice um, if I just refer back to the tutorial was some really cool effects all of this kind of stuff this grunge and graffiti so I just want to talk about that for a second. So let's get back to our tutorial. Now if you go into um, some of the websites out there on the internet, you'll see that things like CG textures and things, you can get really nice decals. And I was having an experiment away with these. Um, so for example, if you go onto kind of some of these decals, you can see they've got nice opacity maps. Um, so all I was really doing was downloading some of these. I just wanna show you how this works. I've got a feeling I may have used up my free limit. Oh no, it's okay, I've got some more free ones today. Um, here is the texture if you like I've downloaded. So all we need to do is just go and find that for a second. Let's just pop over to my finder and if I remember rightly it was in my folder. Let's go through to where we have this organized. Grunge maps. Okay so in here you can see I've been quite busy downloading some of these textures and the ones with the black uh, like this have nice sort of opacity maps and they're PNG files. So if we just drag and drop that natively into Vectorworks, basically we can preserve the alpha channel, which will preserve the PNG file. So now when this pops in, you can see it's really nicely um, got this nice sort of opacity to it. And what's really great is we can kind of stretch it around because it's just an image fill and we can play around with the opacity itself just to get this sort of nice weathered effect. So suddenly it kind of really kind of enhances your drawing 
Um, not to say on all buildings you want this, but let's have a look at doing this one as well. Certainly, you know, it adds a bit of character. Actually, that isn't the right one, you can see, because it doesn't have the opacity map. So just watch out for that. Let's go for one of these. Let's have a look. Yeah, I think that would be pretty cool. Let's kind of drag this in. Um, you can see again, it's just coming quite nicely. Let's just drag that up to the top of the wall. Give it some opacity, sort of just so it kind of fades out a little bit in terms of intensity. It's up to you, the kind of effect you're looking for. I think we'll just do one more and let's just pop open. Let's have a look. Yeah, maybe this one's a nice one. The good thing about this one is I think it's going to work quite nicely for the top and the bottom of the wall as well. And you can see it's giving me a nice sort of dirty look to that wall, but it's a little bit intense. So let's tone it down, say 50%. So suddenly it kind of looks really cool. You know, we've gone from looking quite pristine, this wall, to something um, basically looking quite sort of battered and beaten. Now, let's just carry on with this a little bit more and then we'll put the extra entourage in to create our really kind of artistic drawing. So I also was experimenting with things like cracks um, and things like this. So basically these are nice. You can drag these in to the drawing and make everything look a bit more damaged. Um, so yeah, it's quite fun. Just put one of those in. You can see that kind of gives you a nice sort of damaged feel to that wall. And if again, if we just bring the opacity down, maybe not quite as much this time, 75%. Kind of just looks really, really nice. So we'll just see if there's one more of those we can bring in to enhance our drawing. So what do you think, guys? I think this is um, definitely something that for the odd drawing, it can work well. Just adding a little bit of, you know, imperfection, shall we say. Obviously, it's not for nice, shiny new buildings, um, but this can work pretty, pretty well. Now, another thing that I was experimenting with was things like adding graffiti and things, and this is really fun. So I found some really nice graffiti out there on uh, with the internet search, and the thing you just want to make sure is they have an opacity map. Um, here's quite a cool one for Deadpool, so let's just drag that into the drawing. Click OK. It's coming pretty huge, so let's just scale it down a bit to something a bit more appropriate. And I think, if I remember rightly, it was over in this sort of location. Um, so, scale it up a bit here, it's going to move it along. I'm also, if I want to, I can actually send in front the staining, or I can have that behind. So you can see, you can send it forward or backwards to vary the amount of effect. And again, I do think it looks often nicer with just a little bit of opacity, just to sort of weather it into the wall, maybe not quite that much, 90%, something like that. Okay, good. So this is quite fun. You can see our um, grunge graffiti wall is coming on rather nicely. Let's drag in this sort of other bit of graffiti here. This one's quite nice because it's got a really good clip map. And um, basically we can kind of just drag that onto that wall like it's been sort of freshly sprayed. Not advocating this or <laughs> graffiti by the way, but it's really just to show you how to create quite cool drawings in Vectorworks. And Let's play with that opacity once more. I think about 90% seems to work quite nicely here. Just so it kind of feels a bit more like it's actually part of the wall. Okay. So you can see very, very rapidly, our drawing has come on uh, quite rapidly from where we started. And the other nice thing with this is, um, you can actually kind of put all of these things into classes. So I've got like a grunge class here. And if I go and turn off that class just for a second, you can see, let's take my graffiti, and let's put that into a class as well. There we go, graffiti, and we'll just turn that one off as well. So here we are back at the pristine wall, if you like. Um, we turned off the graffiti and the grunge where we started. Let's just turn it back on to show you the difference. Yeah, brilliant, looking really, really cool. Okay, great, so just to finish off this little exercise um, on the image fills, basically what I did was also found some nice people cutouts. Now Vectorworks actually has a really good library of these, but these are just people cutouts with opacity maps. So again, I can just drag and drop those in. They're gonna come in pretty big, I think. Uh, you can see the size of them here. You could reduce those if you wanted. Let's just bring them in. Yep, <laughs> absolutely giant. And we'll scale those down. 
But basically, it's not a bad idea to start creating some libraries of these kind of things as well. And a good little tip here, pop those down onto the ground level and give yourself something to benchmark to. So what I did, I drew a line across here and I basically moved it. So let's just move that line up by, I don't know, 1700 for kind of head height. There we go. So now you've got something that you can actually kind of reference and sort of snap these people down so they're not too too giant and you've got a nice little reference line which in a minute we'll get rid of. Uh, not that it matters, let's pop those people over here and we'll flip them using the command shift h command, just flip them around. Now let's just basically bring in I think one more little kind of set of people yeah, these cool dudes here. Let's drag those in. We'll do the same thing. Come in huge. This time though, it's quite nice and quick for me to drag them down, snap them straight to that side there, bring them up a tiny bit just to the bottom. Okay, good. So you can see how rapidly this begins to come together. Let's scale him up a little bit more there, this guy. So yeah, he's sort of having a little look at the graffiti there. Um, and so on. So we've kind of created quite a nice street street scene. Now the final touches are, let's add um, a few trees and things. So I'm going to go to the trees, in fact type tree in Vectorworks. And if you do this, you will actually be amazed to see how gorgeous some of the really lovely trees come through. You get some really nice photorealistic varieties of plants and trees. Here they are. Um, some of these are 3D, by the way, just got to be a bit careful, and some of them will be 2D. So if they have a little 3 in the corner, that means they're 3D image props. Okay, if we go down a bit further, probably down to the bottom libraries, you can see we've got some more 2D. They say 2D. So we can just simply drag and drop these in to our drawing. And they come in quite nicely. Good. So we can pop one of those trees there, and because they're symbols, we can simply scale it as well. And finally, let's give it some opacity, okay, just 70%, just to get a nice sort of effect, maybe a bit less. So it kind of feels like it's part of the drawing. Okay, now you notice that um, another little trick is if you want one um, clipped at the side, what we can do here is a symbol, okay, so all you need to do is convert that symbol to a group, or apple K, convert to a group, then you can ungroup it. And now it's just an image fill or a bitmap. So we can simply double click it. And by basically drawing a shape, we can use that. Get our rectangle tool. Let's just draw a little clip shape there. You can use it to actually clip the image if you wanted. Okay, so let's do that and just clip it along that side section. Now you notice um, a slightly odd little redraw thing. Okay, and I've worked out how to fix this. So click onto the tree. And what basically you need to do is delete the outside of the crop, okay? And basically that means that you can actually delete the crop now because it's completely deleted the other bit of the tree and we don't get that funny little redraw issue that we had before. Okay, very good. Now the final little few touches I made on here were to get in a couple of extra bits of things like some grass and things. And just to find that, in fact, I'm just going to pop that to my model here. These were really nice little images that I brought in. So I'm just gonna go and copy some of those and paste them back into my tutorial layer. There we go. And just to save a bit of time, I'll bring through that cool little bit of graffiti there and the letterbox, which I also brought in as that technique and popped those into the drawing. There we go. Excellent. I'll just send that to the front. In fact, I think what we'll do is we'll just kind of relocate that tree into a different position for this particular drawing. Okay, now the final thing was the sky and the sky augmentation. Now to do this, um, just found a really nice set of images off the internet again of some skies. If I can just locate them here. Yeah, here we go. Now these are pretty funky. They're high resolution. Um, you can bring these in and use those in your Vectorworks drawings. So I quite like that one. Let's go for something a bit different today. We'll drag that one into the drawing. Do bear in mind though, when this comes in, it's pretty huge. Okay, so what you're gonna to wanna to do here is go to 
edit attributes. It's 179 megabytes at the moment. So whatever you do, make sure that you scale it down. Say 2000 pixels should be plenty. And that will keep the file size right down. So when we click OK, it's not too big. OK, so we'll send it to the back. And then let's just put it behind our little drawing here. Get the proportions nice. Uh, that's kind of cool. Let's just bring it up a bit here. And finally, um, just to tone it down, because it does look a bit garish, just use opacity to do that. Um, and if try 75% opacity, just to bring that down quite nice. And um, we're just going to do a last few finishing touches here. And I'm just going to go through back to my folder where we were working. And just want to show you how we can do some augmentation, if you like. So let's see, I think it's in this folder here. Sky augmentation. I've got a little folder here. And basically what I've found is um, things like some birds and suns and moons, these kind of things. And again, you can just drag and drop these into the drawing because they've got opacity maps with them as well. They're quite nice. Now, just squeeze them down a bit in terms of size. And remember to use the old opacity function. So if you kind of fade them out, um, they look quite nice and they sort of sit quite happily into the drawing. So I think this is looking really nice. I'm going to play around with the opacity on this, just going to fade it out a bit more and basically refer back to my original, not too far off. I like these trees, so again, let's copy those through into the drawing. And also I've got some nice little kind of bits of grass and another little kind of staining down here. So we'll just copy those elements through into our tutorial and you can see looking really really nice so if you've enjoyed this video please drop me a like and a subscribe um really just wanted to remind you i love working in 3d and i'll be showing you some of my 3d texture packs soon but you know working in 2d is absolutely awesome i really really enjoy vectorworks capabilities for all the drafting the opacity and things like those little drop shadow tricks so i do hope you've enjoyed the video thanks for watching see you soon bye bye